Hello and welcome to this NCFE provider session looking at the NCFE entry level two functional skills qualification in mathematics standardization. The aim of this recording is to help you with marking your entry level two maths papers that are internally assessed by yourselves, internally quality assured, and then reviewed by your external quality assurer from NCFE. My name is Charmaine Phelps and I am a Provider Development Officer here at NCFE specialising in Functional Skills Maths and it's my role to support you with your planning, delivery and preparation for assessments. And I'll put my details on the final slide. So before viewing this recording, you will need the following documents to aid with the standardization process. So we have an entry level two learner response, and we also have the mark scheme that corresponds with that particular paper, paper 11. And it's entirely up to you how you decide to use this recording. So you can take the learner response first and mark it yourself, and then check your marks with the ones that we're going to go through in this session. Alternatively, while we're going through each slide, I'll tell you when you can pause and you can mark the uh, learner response that you can see on the screen, and then I'll show you the, the, the marks that would be awarded. So we're not gonna look at the whole paper, we're just gonna look at the following questions. So 1B, 1E, 2F, 3B, 3C, 3D, 4B, and 4C. It is important when using the mark scheme that you understand the abbreviations. So if you see FT, that stands for follow through. Follow through marks are applied when there are earlier mistakes in the method. OE means or equivalent. Or equivalent marks are available for the justification of the answer being presented in a different form to the mark scheme, such as uh, 0.5 instead of a half. CAO means correct answer only. There refers to the learner's own value. So it's quite often that you might see there along with a follow through. So an incorrect calculation uh, early on in a, a, a higher marked question, but is then followed through. Uh, the marks can be given for the follow through and we will write there for the particular um, calculation that they did that was incorrect. Um, so they may not have got the first mark, but they would then get subsequent marks. Seen refers to the requirement to see the stated value in the learner's response or working out. Implied uh, is uh, shown as imp. Uh, this refers to the learner's response implying correct working out used, but not necessarily seen. Uh, brackets indicates that units are not required on final answers or for answers seen within working. BOD stands for benefit of doubt, where learner handwriting may be difficult to interpret, but previous working may indicate correct final answer. And anything you see in the mark scheme that's shaded indicates the requirements for full marks to be awarded. So this first question, 1B, J has 95 pounds. He buys a greenhouse, greenhouse for sale, 69 pounds. How much money will Jay have left over? Show your working. We've got a learner answer here and the mark scheme. And if you are pausing, please pause now and decide how many marks to award. And I'll show that now. So they'll get one out of two marks. The learner has shown that they know which calculation to perform. So they've got the 95 take away 69 but they've made an error in their subtraction to reach an answer of 25 instead of the 26 pounds. So, but they will get this one mark here uh, for doing the method. 1E, the greenhouse has nine shelves. J puts 12 pots on each shelf. How many pots does he put on the shelves in total? Two marks available. And Here's our learner answer. You can pause the recording now to decide how many marks to award. Otherwise, I'm going to put it on the slide now. One out of two marks. And again, the learner has shown they know which calculation to perform. So we can see that they've done 12 times nine. 
um, but they have made an error in their multiplication. So they've come up with 64 being 12 times 9 rather than 108. Question 2F. Jay needs to plant some seeds outside. He checks the weather forecast. Jay wants to plant the seeds on days when there is rain and when the temperature is more than 10 degrees Celsius. Which days will he choose? So here's our learner's answer. You can pause now to decide how many marks and I'm going to share with you now how many marks to award. So here they'll get one out of the two possible marks. It looks as if what the learner's done is they've listed all of the days that have a temperature above 10 degrees. So they've listed Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But it does say uh, when there is rain and when the temperature is more than 10 degrees C. So for these three days, Friday, there is no rain. So we shouldn't have seen the Friday there. So unfortunately, um, we can't give the full marks, but we can give one out of the two marks because uh, we can see that they have indicated the Thursday and the Saturday. Three B, J measures a carrot. How long is the carrot to the nearest labeled division? You can pause to decide how many marks to award. And they've got one out of a possible one mark. Uh, they initially attempted to give an exact answer. Uh, however, it's been crossed out and the correct answer, so the nearest label division is 35 and that's what they've put so we can give them the mark there. 3C, Jay counts the number of vegetables he picks each week. He puts the results in a table. In which week did Jay pick 70 carrots? And here's the learner's answer. And you can decide how many marks you're going to award out of possible um, one mark. And we're going to give them the one mark. Although the learner has written three weeks rather than week three, the three is seen, so the mark can be awarded. Three D. This table shows the number of tomatoes J picks. He wants to show the results in a bar chart. Complete the bar chart. And this is our learner's response. And you can pause the recording to decide how many marks you would give. And I'll show you that now. So they're going to get one out of two marks. Four of the bars are accepted as correct, as this fifth bar, it's the top bit's been crossed out. It's this second bar that we can't accept because the bar goes too far above the line. So um, for week two, it should be 60. Um, and while we will accept this one here because it starts off at the 70, we can't really accept this because it's just too high on both sides. 4B, Jay has a party for his friends. There are 90 slices of cake to eat. When his friends leave, these slices are left over. How many slices of cake did his friends eat? So here's the learner's answer. And you can decide how many marks you would give for this answer. And I'll show that on the screen now. So we're going to give two out of three marks. So we can see the 28 there. Okay, so they've counted um, that we've got 28 pieces of cake there. Uh, so they can have the, the mark for counting the 28 slices of cake. Then they do get the next mark, 90 take 28. So they've got that mark there. 
but the final mark cannot be awarded because 90 to 8 take away 10 to 28 is not 45. Uh, they should have reached 62 slices. Now, important to note that with this particular question, had the learner shown no working at all and just written 62, you could have given them all three marks. Now, that's important for you to know when you're marking your learner's work, um, because depending on what the mark scheme says, they don't always have to show their, their full working if they've got the correct answer. But obviously, this learner has been helped by showing their working. They've gained two out of the three marks because had they simply written 45, they wouldn't have got any marks at all. So for your learners, do make sure that they do show their working. But for you, when you're marking, don't penalise them if they get a correct answer and they haven't shown marking unless the question specifically says that they do need to show working. 4C, Jay also makes pea and potato snacks. He cooks the peas and potatoes and rolls them into balls. What is the name of this 3D shape? Um, here's our learner response. How many marks would you award here? I'll show that now. So zero marks, unfortunately. It's a good attempt at the learner writing what they can see. However, it is not the correct name for the shape. The only answer we would accept is sphere, um, but we would accept a spelling mistake so long as the meaning is clear. Thanks so much for your time. I hope you found this recording helpful. If you have any questions following on from this, you can contact me by email or also by phone. My email address and my phone number are there on the screen, Charmaine Phelps at ncfe.org.uk, 01912408806. Thank you.